year for fundraising, and there's a lot of um, talk these days about thank yous. And this is just a hot off the press today. Uh, the agitator is blogging about thank you letters. A lot of people are today, and I, and, and I love this idea. I love the idea that your thank you says to the donor that you matter. And I just want to tell you that I made a bunch of Giving Tuesday gifts. I know y'all probably did too. And I made a gift to a local organization here in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I live. <laughs> and it was an email um, gift, of course, you know, online gift. And they sent me an email thank you letter. And it was so lame, it almost made me want to throw up. And this is, this is what it said. It said, um, <laughs> it said, private support is essential for um, for services such as these to be delivered to the blah, 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 like private support is essential. Does that make me feel good? Does that make me feel like I matter? It was the most lame. It was the most um, uh, impersonal. And, and, and it was so organization-centered rather than donor-centered. So, so see if your thank you letter makes the donor feel like they matter. And I was just reading another blogger today about thank you letters, and the guy said that um, – the, there was this lady who saw him at an event, and she walked up to him and she said, I got a thank you letter from you that was handwritten, and it was so wonderful, and she started crying. And she said to this guy, this fundraiser, she said, I give regularly to many charities, but no one has ever thanked me personally. So, um, so how do you make this regular old thank you letter feel so personal that maybe your donor will find you at an event, go across the room, Find out who you are and, and, and almost weep about the thank you letter that you wrote her. Now, this is our goal, right? Because we know that if you, um, if you can write a letter like that, your donor will stick with you forever, won't she or won't he? Uh, certainly much longer than most of the other donors. And here is um, one more blogger today, and this is, the, this is the article that the agitator, by the way, I, I read the agitator just about daily, it's theagitator.net, I think, Roger Craver. Um, and and this, that's the one blog that I would highly recommend that you never miss. But they, they, they blogged about this today. This guy, Matthew Sherrington, he's a, he's a Brit, British guy. And he said, forget about thanking your donors. He said, instead, thinking about congratulating them for the difference that they're making and what they have achieved. You know, don't be grateful, be humble. Uh, and it's our job as a charity is to help people do their good in the world, not the other way around. So what, he, what he's making the point is, is that our thank you letters are not donor-centered. They are organization-centered because they thank donors for giving us the money so that we can do the good work. And what he's saying and what I try to say is that if you can create a donor-centered thank you letter, you are giving the, the donor credit for the work. So you are saying, thank you, Mr. Donor, for making this happen in our community. You're not saying, thank you, Mr. Donor, for giving us the money so that we can work so hard and create this good impact in the world. Instead, you remove your organization as the intermediary between the donor and the impact of the work. And I'm going to hit on this again and again because that is the essence of what a really good donor-centered thank you letter does. And I want to um, pull some of my favorite slides from our friends at Bloomerang. And I do want to tell you that I highly recommend Bloomerang software. A lot of the people that I coach in fundraising are choosing Bloomerang, and they're writing me and telling me how much, how much they appreciate it and how much they like Bloomerang software. And I will say one of the reasons I like the software particularly is that you can set up, um, you can set up your um, dashboard the minute you log into your fundraising software to see what your donor retention and donor attrition is. So if you don't know your donor retention and attrition, you need to be on top of that because that's where the easy money is in fundraising today. And uh, the reason I'm showing this slide is that here's what's vulnerable. If we do a crappy job of thanking our donors, then we're going to get really poor donor retention and the donor thank you letter is the first step in retaining your donor and getting the second gift. So your thank you letter is not like some grind bread and butter thing that you just have to do moan and groan. No, your thank you letter is the first step in the next solicitation. 
so given that given it's that critical a step in the process, we get to take, pay a whole lot more attention to it. And here's just one more slide from Bloomerang about that the data, data just for this year. Um, the biggest, most vulnerable pool of donors you have are your very first-time donors, and you can see, and and this this these um this data is pretty consistent over the years that about one out of every five new donors to your organization is going to renew, and four out of every five of, of new donors to your organization are not going to renew. So your job is to slather your donors with thanks and with and with joy, so that they feel so connected to you that they're going to keep giving. Um, and I would also suggest maybe even more particularly your first-time online donors are most vulnerable of all because I think the online thank you process is weaker than the paper thank you process. And I'll be interested to see if I get a paper thank you letter in addition to an email thank you letter from the, the lame people that I gave to uh, just, just earlier this week. Um, and so I'm going to now let now let's talk about what makes a good thank you letter because we know that when your donor is satisfied she is going to give again and give more the next time she's asked right so um so thank you so much for tweeting Rachel MP I love it thanks so much and so what's in a great letter I've got all sorts of tips and I'll probably go a little fast since we're short on time. And if, um, I've closed down the questions because they were distracting me because I was worried about my audio. So I'm not looking at the questions right now. And so I'm going to quote a lot from Penelope Burke because she did some of the early work on donor thank you letters that I think is still very, um, very valuable today. And uh, one of the things I like about her is that she's surveying donors and they are giving her bona fide answers, although we do know that what people say in a survey may not agree with what they do, but this data is useful. That if, if, if you're done, the number one thing that donors think makes a superior thank you letter is that it's personalized. So if you've got a hundred big donors to your organization, the, the, the largest hundred donors, I would peel them off for something even more special um, and something even more personal. And if you have a whole slew of routine thank you letters that are mass produced and mass printed, why don't you take them to a staff meeting and do what we call top and tail the thank you letter? You know, it says, Dear Mr. Smith, printed, slash it out and write Mr. Smith or James or something, and then slash out the bottom and say thank you. You know, you've seen letters like that where somebody will take a blue pen and they'll write on top of the printed letter. That might be a really shortcut way to uh, personalize a lot of letters. Uh, and, and to me, there's nothing more meaningful to me when I get a letter that from somebody who really, that clearly is not mass produced, you know. And, um, and I also think hey, I'm going to have a little bit about handwritten thank you letters here too. I think that you should, um, if you really want to like um, hit a home run with your thank you letter, Send a printed letter and then send a thank you, a handwritten thank you letter from someone else in addition to the printed letter. I, I don't know if I've ever gotten a one-two punch on thank you letters before, but if I did, I would probably faint and I'd probably keep right on giving, you know. Um, and so probably, uh, again, besides personalization, I think that really, really prompt thank you letters are absolutely essential. And here's Penelope Burke's research, but it's been corroborated with other studies um, that show that the sooner the donor gets the thank you letter, the more likely they are to give again. And they even, they even measured at a week lag time versus 24 hours or 48 hours. So um, I think that you should make uh, getting those thank you letters out quickly to be absolutely top importance. And that's why your back office is so important to your productivity of any fundraising office. And we know that your don donor software Light Bloomerang is a key part of your back office. Help your back office people understand how important this is. Give them credit for their role in bringing in more money. The Agitator blog says that the back office of any fundraising operation, that includes the software, is, is responsible for 25% of the profit. So get your back office people on board to crank out these thank you letters quickly. And to me, it makes me think that um, – 
an organization is well run when I get a quick thank you letter, and that also means that um, I, I feel like my money is going to be well used if the organization is efficient and they can and they can make it happen so quickly. Um, also, again, may I please beg you talk about how the money is going to be used because I, I I mean I get this generic crap I get generic appeals I get generic thank you letters well why don't you tell me that you're raising fifty thousand this year to expand your boys and girls club so that you can bring in a target of 200 more kids why don't you tell me that your independent school is going to be offering um, enhanced technology and sports equipment with our annual fund money why don't you tell me that the backpack buddies program is going to expand to another 500 kids this year because of my gifts in December and other people. Um, you know, the donor wants to know where the money's going, and we have such a, a terrible problem with trust these days. Donors don't trust us. Use our money wisely. So if you can give your money, if you can talk to your donor, even in general terms about how you're going to use it, she's going to be happier. And that's what we mean by impact. You know, talk about the project that you're going to spend the money on, and then talk about the impact that the money will have. And by the way, I have got um, uh, quotes from thank you letters sprinkled in here. And these, I just want to say these are some of the best thank you letters ever written in my book. So study these thank you letters and knock them off. See what you can do. You know, your gift will go directly to help protect the Shipley Fields. You know, go directly makes a donor happy. Now, can you acknowledge your donor's previous giving? You know, wouldn't it be wonderful if you can peel off your previous supporters or you, can, you, could, you should certainly acknowledge that somebody is a monthly donor or that they've been supporting you for 10 or 20 years. I mean, I've, I get letters from people that I've supported for 10 or 20 years and they don't mention that they, that they know that I'm a long-term supporter or that I have their organization in my will or anything. I mean, they both know that I have my organization in the will. But nobody takes the trouble to acknowledge in the thank you letter my long-term commitment to their organization. And, you know, it just makes me feel like it's not personalized. I mean, it's not going to change my commitment because my commitment is deeper than the thank you letter. You know, it's a personal connection. But, gosh, don't you think it's good manners to let your, your long-term donors know that you, in fact, know what, what they've done for you all these years? I, th I think so. And um, here, here's, a, here's, a, here's a, a, um, a comment by, um, about tone of the letter. And I pulled some quotes from Penelope Burt because um, um, actually I think these are my quotes um, on the right-hand side of this page. How can you convey excitement, gratitude, and warmth to your donor? You know, can't you say right at the beginning of the thank you letter instead of it's essential that private contributions come in, blah, blah, blah. Can't you say we were thrilled to receive your gift last week? You know, or because of your gift, a family's going to have clean water or um, a warm coat for their child. You know, um, I, I think that we in fundraising um, do a terrible job of our language. Nobody wants to use words like desperate, heartbroken, sad, difficult. We want to use lofty words that are, that are not so emotionally gripping. And why, why don't you throw some words in there that mean something? Throw some verbs in there that mean something? You know, um, get rid of ditch the ditch the lofty nonprofit tone, please, and 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 wear wear your heart on your sleeve. I mean, I, I think you should wear your heart on your sleeve when you send out your appeal letter, and certainly you can gush if gushing is in your personality when you um when you when you thank. And for example, one of the Giving Tuesday um, uh, gifts I made, I did it on uh, Monday night early. Uh, to another, um, the Interfaith Food Shuttle here in Raleigh. And, you know, I just sent in $50. I liked them, and they were in my inbox on Monday night. And I've always liked them. I don't know if I've ever given. And so, boom, there goes $50. I'm thrilled. I'm happy. I said, oh, yes, I start off giving Tuesday with a bang. Do you know that first thing, Monday, um, Tuesday morning, I get a personal note from the development director. He says, Gail, I was thrilled to receive your gift you know, we think so much of your work. Well, I'm sending your blog to our board, blah, blah, blah. And 
you know, it does I don't need to be flattered by him, but it but it made me happy that he knew who I was and he took the time to um um to to, to, to let me know that. You know, this is not so difficult, everybody. It's not so difficult at all. Now, what about grabbing the reader's attention? You know, can't you like start off? Um, this is a um, a thank you letter that I actually worked on um, with with a music group. You know that that we we you know they were beating around the bush in their thank you letter, and I said, listen, why don't we just start right off and say how proud we are that we nourish and enrich our lives with music? You know, let's be happy about our work and let's connect the donor right off the bat with a wonderful opening sentence. You know, start out with something unusual. Never, ever, ever start out your thank you letter with on behalf of the blah, blah, blah. You know, do you want to read a letter like that? No, no, not at all. Um, and how about a personal address? You use a personal salutation. Um, you know, I'm quoting Penelope Burke here. You know, a, a letter without a personal address leaves the donor feeling like, um, you know, the organization knew it got a gift, but who gave me the gift? I don't know. So, you know, like, dear friend is just awful. I, I, I mean, I just don't think, I just don't think you would ever get another gift from this donor if you sent out a dear friend letter, right? Um, now, I get a lot of questions about who should sign the thank you letter, um, and I think it's lovely if you can have somebody sign all the letters in blue ink. Um, you know, it, it, it is a sign of respect. It does take time, you know. But what is the most important thing in your organization? You know, fundraising may be one of the most important things that y'all ever do, and getting your donor retention up a few notches and keeping the money flowing in may be really, really, really important. So why don't you analyze the um, the ability, the, you know, the cost versus benefits of uh, of trying to figure out how to sign a lot? And if you've got hundreds or thousands. A very, I know Mike, Michael's got an excellent question. He's got hundreds or thousands of very personalized or segmented letters. You know, you've got to be efficient and you've got to figure out the most efficient way to do this given your organization's resources. But I do have a thank you letter in this slide deck that I got and it's clearly mass produced and it almost made me cry. So there, it, it, and it was not necessarily segmented. So, um, you know, segment as best you can, personalize as best you can, uh, based on your organization's resources. And here's an example: I once heard of um, of a nonprofit who had uh, they had a very quick uh, paper thank you letter turnaround. They were very proud of that, but then they also had a group of little old ladies who came in once a week and they hand wrote thank you letters on top of whatever the organization had already done. And the little old la the older ladies had a pizza lunch or whatever lunch. So they had a social event. They were volunteering for their cause. I also heard of another organization. I think it might have been a Ronald McDonald House. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of corporations that like to have their employees volunteer as a group. So this company went to the, the nonprofit and said, how can we volunteer? And the nonprofit said, we'd love to have y'all make thank you calls to our donors. So how, how amazing to have your corporate volunteers making thank you calls on behalf of your organization. Uh, I, 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 I love that idea. I've, heard, I've had people say that they have people wanting to volunteer, but they don't know what to do with them. Put them to work in the fundraising program on the thank you side of it, and, and I think you might get some real mileage from that. And you also, you talk about a heartwarming activity for a volunteer to take on extremely. Now, I think, too, that um, somebody signing the letter is important, and, um, and I, I like somebody from the highest ranks of the organization. I do not think the poor, lowly development clerk should sign the letters, and I don't think the development director should sign the letters. Even if you do all the work, you do not need to be signing the letters. They should come from the board chair or the chair of the board. Um, so, um, and also, why don't you try having the hit prima ballerina sign the letters or the 
or the you know North Carolina Symphony is so popular here in in Raleigh or in the state. What if the what if the conductor signs some of the letters? I just think that would be so exciting. So or or have somebody sign the letter who is helped by your organization. Wouldn't that be amazing? I love that. Um, and you know, uh, send send another letter from a grateful recipient. I mean, this is one of my absolute favorite images on this slide. Sponsor child, and and it's clearly a drawing from a kid. And she says, "Thank you for the presents." I mean, if if I got this kid this thank you letter in the mail, hand lettered by a child, I would just it would break my heart, and it would make me so happy. So frankly. The most powerful thank you letter I see in this whole bunch of great examples I'm giving y'all today is the one that comes from the kid. So you know you can be creative. This this is um this is this is we I think maybe we're we get a little bit stale stale. You know, and Angie's saying that they are a child based nonprofit, and they have our children. We have our children sign special letters with the misspellings and the backward letter and all. That is just so cool. Um, so, um, let's, you know, this is another interesting idea. Uh, one of the things you need to do, you need to be always um, refreshing your content in the letter, and that's so hard. I mean, I remember when I was a staff fundraiser, um, it was it was so dreary to have to redo my, my thank you letters. It's like, ho-hum, what do I say now? But, you know, if I... If I decided to change the content of my thank you letters often, I could say, like, I just heard this story, which I want to share with you. You know, it. Um, and by the way, Richard Turner, our fundraiser, um, he is blogging right now about thank you letters, and I would strongly, and I've got him at the resource at the end of this um, presentation, so check him out and read his articles. Um, and, and he just said that, that, that you need to be authentic about sharing a story. You know, so so just think about what what's going on in your organization that you want to tell your donor about, because it's going to make your donor happy to hear it from you, right? Um, and and Richard also says that if you can if you can bring um bring in fresh content, then you're making your donor feel like an insider. Um, and 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 Richard also says that if you're looking for stories to share with your donors in thank you letters, then you'll be looking for those stories. You'll be talking to your program people, and you'll find some stories you can use not only in the thank you letters, but maybe in other places like um, working directly one-on-one -on -one with donors. You know, maybe if you're making thank you phone calls. And somebody asked a question earlier if I preferred well, how I felt about thank you phone calls versus letters. Frankly, I think you need to do both. Um, studies show that if a donor receives a thank you phone call, they're more likely to give and they're most give again, and they're more likely to give more. Um, but I think the paper letter is the bread and butter, and that's your basic tool. You must do the paper letter, I think, which is good manners, and then you can enhance with an additional thank, a handwritten, and or an or a phone call. Um, and also. Um, this is this is one of my this is what I touched on earlier in our conversation was the idea of giving the donor credit for your work and this is so hard to do I tell people to do this I say send me your thank you letter send me your appeal letter and and but make sure that you give them the credit and nobody will do it they say oh we were founded in 2000 and you know we were founded in 1905 and since then we've served 100,000 people in our community and we've gotten this award and blah 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 you know and your gifts helped us build um, to help your, your gifts helped us feed these people your gifts helped us bring art your gift helped us do blah 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 water you know instead of to, saying to the donor your gift brought the water to the people your gift saved lives. Your gift gave books to kids to read. You know, it, it is such a fundamental difference, and it is not intuitive, and, and hardly anybody does it. <laughs> so if you can pull that off, send me your letter, and I will put it in my next webinar because <laughs> I, would, I, would be, I would like to see it. I would love to see it. Um, now, look, I have 
I'm I'm a volunteer with an organization way back in Eastern North Carolina, and they they were sending pre-printed cards, and it was it it was enough to drive me crazy. And she said, "Oh, we can't afford to send letters. Give me a break. No wonder they only had like 250 donors left. So surely you are not sending pre-printed cards anymore, and." If you are, um, I'm sh- I imagine that your fundraising totals are going downhill very quickly, you know. Um, and and one of the great rules of fundraising is that the thank you letter does not ask for another gift, and it's um, it's a matter of some controversy. And I'll, let me tell you why, because studies show that the the number one time a donor will make another gift to the organization is within six weeks of their first gift. So there, um, people who are in direct mail, and especially people who are in monthly giving, know that this is absolutely um, um, correct, and the data is correct, and so they do try to get another ask in there with the gift. And then other people say, don't you dare do it. I think it's very awkward if you ask for another gift. Um, and if you do want to try to do that, you have to be so smooth and so heartfelt that um, that you're, and so much about the impact and the people who need the help that that's the only way you can possibly pull it off. It's, um, you know, it's really interesting that Penelope Burt said that 21% of the charities she surveyed do, in fact, include a return envelope in the thank you letter. And so that's, you know, Maybe maybe a return envelope in the thank you letter could be a little prompt. I, I don't know. And I think perhaps you need to test that with your own donors. Um, and, and, you know, and, and, and a lot of us are saying don't ask the donor to do anything. You know, I don't like thank you letters that ask me to take a survey. I don't like thank you letters that, um, that require any action on my part um, because I, I'm suspicious. No, um, I, I don't like a thank you letter that has an enclosure. And if you can see on the slide that Penelope Burke has said that 80, 86% of charities do include some kind of enclosure, such as a survey, a newsletter, an invitation, or a gift. I don't think that's a good idea, and I think Penelope Burke agrees with me. Um, I think it should be straightforward, just like your appeal letter is stronger if you do not couple it with a fundraising brochure. Right, so the letter itself needs to stand on its own and have one point. Um, how about spelling errors and grammatical errors? You know, I really, really think that um, there are way too many errors out there. And listen, I blog weekly, and I'm sending emails all the time. And so, so I hope people will will give me the the benefit of the doubt if they're typos, because. Um, uh, um, uh, online communication, there's a little bit greater forgiveness in online communication. But for something that's typed, it's extremely awkward if they're grammatical or spelling errors. So again, you know, make sure donor feel like you care about them, right? So that you can do this correctly. Um, and you know, I spoke about tone earlier, but I want to I want to talk about tone from a different direction. How about being casual? Now, we do know that all of the communications online should be more casual than communications in print. Do you agree with me? Um, because, because the stuff that's happening online is just different. And then the stuff that's happening through social media is supposed to be social, right? which means it's really casual. It's really playful. If you're trying to do social media and you're not being entertaining, you're probably falling on your face, right? So consider... Get is consider look at your tone and the def, let me let me define what tone means from my English major at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, tone means the attitude of the writer of, of the writer toward the subject of the letter or the attitude of the writer toward the person that they're writing to. So what is your attitude? Is it lofty and distant, or is it warm and fuzzy? You know, are you loving on your donors? Are you treating them like your best friend? If, they, if, your donor, if you're treating your donor like their family, like their best friend, would you say, on behalf of blah, blah, blah? No, you might say, we were so thrilled. Thank you so much. You know, think about how you would write a personal thank you letter for, um, for a gift, a Christmas present or a holiday gift or something, a birthday present. Um, 
Now, this is really important that I see. This is a huge error in mass communications a lot, that people, um, people, people write, and this is, people write generically to a group of people. Like, for example, I'm going to get a thank you letter. Um, it's thanks to gifts like yours that, no, no, that's not, that's not generic. That's more specific. Um, you, you could say, without the generous support of people like you, um, you, 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 what, I'm sorry, let's see, I'm, I'm not being clear. If you send out a letter and say, all of you are saying blah, 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 instead of you are saying blah, 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 you, you, you want to speak, you want to write the letter like it's to one person rather than a group of people. And the reason is, is that one person is listening and one person is reading the letter. If you follow my blog that I send out every Friday, my newsletter, um, if you notice, I'm always writing to you, the reader. I'm not writing to all of you, or I'm not writing to plural you, right? I hope I'm clear on that. I'm not sure if I was. Um, and, you know, Penelope Burke also says you, you're not continue, Not only do you not ask, but you're not continuing to sell your organization. Now, you are telling the reader what they're accomplishing, but you're not. There's a difference between selling your organization and bragging, you don't want to be bragging, but you want to be talking heartfelt about the work that you're doing. Um, here is Penelope Burke's favorite letter in her famous book, um, Donor-Centered Fundraising. And I know this letter, so this thank you letter so well, I could almost repeat it by heart. And this thank you letter has like, what, five sentences. And it starts out with, I must have heard the cheers from Donna Carbuncle this morning when we told her that you are funding blah, blah project. You know, her excitement was matched by our own deep appreciation for your belief in and support of our work. You know, what, what, a, what a lovely thank you letter. I mean, can you write a thank you letter to your donor that says you must have heard the cheers in the hall? And maybe you can't authentically say that to everybody. But see if you can have that kind of happy tone in your letter. You know, how about sincere, in the meantime, our regards and sincere thanks. Isn't that a lovely way to close the letter? Um, how about handwritten letters? Here are some rules for handwritten letters, you know. Um, what if you just take five minutes here and there to pen a quick handwritten thank you letter, you know. And you, sh you should definitely, definitely handwrite if you know the donor personally, if they're well-known in the community, if they're a long-term supporter, if they're well-known um, – if they're a leadership donor, you know, clearly this, these are times when you definitely handwrite your letters. Um, and what about another additional handwritten letter from a senior program staffer? What about that? I just, I just, I just think that's, that's a lovely thing. We're, we're seeing a big trend in major gift fundraising of connecting program staff with donors so consider consider that as a possibility. Um, and here here's another wonderful letter. We, dear Mrs. Hamilton, we needed you and you were there. We're so grateful for your donation, which has been allocated to our new literacy program for street youth. You know, look, this person is saying directly um, um, where, how they are allocating the money. You know, and it and it's letting the donor know that we're going to circle back to you with a with some information, it tells the donor who to contact. Um, what is so short and it's wonderful. You know, can you knock this off? Now, here is a thank you letter that was sent to me just, um, I guess it was October, November 22nd, September 22nd. Um, and by the way, I made this gift online on September the 11th the morning of September the 11th to um, Doctors Without Borders. And if you notice, um, I, they, they, they mailed me the thank you letter on the 22nd of the month. So that was, what, an 11-day turnaround? Now, this is a mass-produced letter. And it starts out on behalf of. But I want to tell you one thing, that this letter almost made me cry. And this letter almost made me go right to the computer and send them another gift and they didn't ask for a gift but they were so clear about what they're doing and 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 you know we rushed an emergency surgery teams and a hundred tons of medical supplies by air and sea in Yemen 
You know, in the Ukraine we did this, but they're not bragging. There's a difference between bragging and and um, and being really urgent about their work. And I like the last sentence. In, or the last two sentences in this letter, and I cut it off a little bit. The very last sentence says, thank you so much for joining us in our important something mission. <laughs> you have to fill in that word because it got cut off. But can't you just say something like that to your letters and um, to your donors in a thank you letter? You know, this is really great stuff, you know. And here's another one. Um, and by the way, I'm, I'm getting ready. To, I'm closing down the, uh, my own presentation so I can take some questions. In a minute, and I'm just going over some other really terrific um, thank you letters so that you can think about these and use these as a new model. Um, you know, here's one. Dear Mrs. Jones, at a time when you were remembering someone very dear to you, you also thought of others now living with terminal illness, and you extended your hand of support to them. On their behalf and from us, thank you. Now, now look, look how short this is. Look how lovely this is. This is thoughtful. This is heartfelt. This is emotional. It doesn't beat around the bush. It makes me happy, right? <laughs> it makes me happy. And here, um, here's a letter that Steve Pigeon, a great um, blogger and speaker, if you've ever heard him speak at a conference, you should not miss him at all. Look, this guy from the Irish Red Cross. He, um, he ups and writes, Mr. Pigeon, to say, um, I've noticed it's, it's five years this month since we received your first kind donations. And I do hope our records are accurate, but I wanted to say how very much we've appreciated your support and kindness over these years. Now, isn't that sweet? You know, and then, it's, and then there are other stuff in the letter, and that's made possible only because of steadfast kindness such as yours. Can, can you thank your donors for their steadfast kindness? Can you offer your donors your warmest wishes? You know, this is real stuff. This is real human to human. You know, I have not seen, quite frankly, the word kind kind and kindness used in, um, in thank you letters a whole lot in the States, but I do see it in um, letters from other parts in the world. I was just in Australia last month on a speaking tour, and I'm seeing a different kind of tone even all over there as well. And here's another one. Um, this came for Adrian Sargent, you know, the very famous um, uh, researcher. And again, this is a British, um, British entity. Um, thank you for your support. Your recent gift will make a difference in the lives of many that might otherwise go without. For every dollar of your contribution, you have provided five meals to your hungry neighbors in need. You know, it's, that's just about all you need to say, isn't it? You know, and because of your support, like this is a donor center thank you letter. It doesn't say um, because of your support, we are able to help 66,000 different people. Instead, it says, because of your support, 66,000 people will receive emergency food. You see, this is, not, this, is, this is connecting the donor directly with the impact. You know, I, I love this letter. This is, these, are, these are really lovely. You know, and it, it has a PS about matching gifts. That's an okay PS. So here, well, good, we're just about great on time. Um, I'm going to give you um, my short checklist. Thank you letters, do's and don'ts. And um, I have this in a blog, all written up in a blog on my website, gailperry.com, and I've got a live link to my blog post about thank you letters um, on um, slide 46 in just a few minutes. But let's just review. You know, be really, really prompt. Get the donor's name right. You know, ha have a high-ranking person sign the letter personally. Show some emotion, please. I, I think that would be, and wear your heart on your sleeve. You know, convey gratitude. Convey emotional gratitude. It's very different from the lofty, formal tone that our nonprofits like to use. Talk about how you're going to use the gifts. And if you can, acknowledge the fact that your donor has given before. Um, and, um, you know, send thank you notes from several different people if you can. Uh, send a thank you letter from somebody helped. 
by your organization. You know, have board members send thank you letters or make phone calls. Use a real signature. You know, um, if you notice, all of these thank you letters are, that I just showed you are emotional, but, they, um, but they're positive and upbeat. You know, they're talking about hope um, for good works and good things to happen in the world. Um, can you be concise? <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if you read my blog, but if you do, I, you might notice that I'm so succinct. I will write my newsletter and I'll write my blog post on Fridays and I will go back through and I will edit out every word and phrase and even sentence that I can possibly get rid of while still making my point. So brevity is highly valued, right? Highly valued. Um, you know, Penelope Burke is really big on including a contact name and number. Um, I think that that is, again, good manners, and it helps the donor feel like you, you're treating them like a real person. You know, handwrite the letter if you know the donor well, right? And begin with a lovely, innovative sentence. That char char can you charm your donor with your thank you letter? Love this stuff. And then here is my list of thank you letter don'ts. You know, don't start, even though Dr. Simbosite Border said on behalf of generally, I would say, unless you can make somebody weep with the rest of the letter, I would start out with a different phrase and don't ask for another gift. And don't use jargon, blah, blah, we are deeply grateful for your continued support. Um, you know, don't use dear friend, don't misspell their name. You know, don't ask anything else from your donor right now. By the way, while I'm reviewing these, queue up your questions, and I'll be taking them in just a second. Um, don't, don't, you know, take a look at your grammar. Um, don't go on and on and, and, and be, be, be verbose. Don't keep selling. Um, you know, don't ask the donor to do anything. Um, don't be formal. And don't be vague about how the money will be used. Um, and don't, don't sign it yourself if you can get a higher ranking person to sign it. Um, you know, and, and, and you know, I, I think maybe overall, I think you just wear your heart on your sleeve and be yourself as best you possibly can. And, again, if you do read my blog and newsletter, I invite you to sign up. It's, it's um, once or twice a week, um, and I'm always talking about the latest trends in philanthropy and what you really need to know. But, but if you do read my material, you can tell that I wear my heart on my sleeve. You can tell that I show my personality, that I'm willing to be a real person, and it comes across, and, and it creates trust, and it creates a connection. Um, so, by the way, I think that you are awesome because you are sticking with me and you're having you're spending this time on a busy, busy, busy time of year. So let me just say, I, I bought this print because I liked it so much, and when somebody signs up for my blog, I send it to them. But can you make your donors feel this awesome? Can you write a love letter to your donors and say you are awesome and here are the ways? Let me count the reasons why you are awesome. You know, you need to be able to be just like this to the wonderful people who are supporting your mission. And if you do, you will build repeat donors that you can count on year after year. And if you have repeat donors you can count on year after year, what do you have? You have sustainable cash flow. So you, my friends, you know, I tell you, by focusing on loving your donors, you build up this whole stable of loyal people who are with you over and over and over. You have less work. And you have a, a, a you you are able to go to this diehard group of people because they're so connected. Whenever there's something new, they are thrilled to be able to help you because they join with you in carrying out this work, and you are making them feel happy. So hooray, hooray, hooray! Right. So here are my resources, and here's my blog at the top. That my my blog with my thank you letter do's and don'ts. Um, but the other, um, the, 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 the fifth one down, don't ask, don't thank, that's today, yesterday's post from The Agitator by Roger Craver that's very important. And then we've got Matthew Sherrington, who's very provocative, wrote earlier this week about how, why asking and thanking is all wrong. And again, he's like taking the art, he's taking it on its head and saying we need to be humble 
and and take a different tone altogether to our donors. So this, by the way, everybody, this is the cutting edge of fundraising right now, because this is where this is the the key changes in fundraising are around our words and the way we are communicating and connecting with our donors. The, the donor engagement, right? This is where. It, this is where all the excitement is, this is where the fulcrum is, this is where the opportunity is, and this is where you can either gain or lose your trends and your fundraising totals is trying to master this new way of connecting. Um, so, um, so study this stuff. It's, it's, it's current and it's important. It's really important. So uh, I can't wait to take some questions. Um, and lastly, um, every, um, every good presentation has um, – a call to action, and so my call to action is, is go to these people, subscribe to all of their blogs. I'd love for you to sign up for my newsletter. Um, but I really, really do want to say something about the IRS disclaimer, Barnett. I don't like the IRS disclaimer. I think it's awkward, and I think it's – hello? Hello? Hey, you're still in, Gail. You're still there. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, um, can I just say something about the IRS disclaimer? <laughs> because it's yes, um, please. To me, it adds a note of um, business. It adds a note of um, it, it takes away from the emotional joy. I don't like the IRS discla- the disclaimer. I um, I would rather not have it as a in, um, in the thank you letter at all. Uh, I'd rather it not be included. Uh, you can send it by email. Do you really need it? I'm not so sure you really need it um, for everybody. I get thank you letters all the time, and I get an IRS disclaimer about one out of every ten, and it doesn't make me feel very good. It makes me feel sort of yucky um, because it's, it, it takes away from my, the warmth of my philanthropy. So I, I, I would suggest find a different way, a different way. Um, and so... What about organizations who don't thank people who give less than $25? You know, Joan, that is a great question. I, I, I think it's a real mistake. I mean, I guess they're saying you don't want any gifts under $25, right? And so if you don't want any gift, you know, why don't you add up all those gifts? And, 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 and if it's not worth you thinking, then it's not worth anybody giving. Um, I, I think it's, it's a real misplaced set of priorities, quite frankly, really misplaced. Um, what about adding a business card, Don? I don't know. I, I'd add my business card if I wrote a personal note on it saying, you know, if it, I'd be thrilled if you wanted to contact me. Here's my card. But I wouldn't just send one um, without that. I don't think so. And um, let's see. What about Joan says, what's the importance of using a name um, that in, instead of writing dear friend because – their organization is concerned that if they write Dear Mrs. Smith and they wanted you to write Dear Mrs. John Smith, they may be offended. I, I tell you what, I, I think I'd rather try Mrs. John Smith rather than write Friend because I'm going to be even more offended. I mean, I'm not going to give you another gift if you write me a generic Dear Friend letter. I, I, I think that that is um, very sad and somebody is, is, um, is making some decisions who doesn't understand fundraising, <laughs> clearly. Um, Gabby wants to know how should you ask for matching gifts. There's a lovely request for matching gifts in one of these uh, sample thank you letters that I would knock off. Um, uh, Patsy wants to know how do you address a letter to an organization with a very long name? (laughs) Um, How do you address a letter to an organization with a very long name? Maybe, maybe Maybe use an abbreviation. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Um, Let's see. I'm, let's see. Other ways we can include the IRS statement. Um, you know, first of all, oh boy, some great questions. Let me let me ask about the the, um, the IRS statement. First of all, do you really need it? I would investigate that, and I'm not an expert on that. I can't tell you. Um, you can always put it on the back of your thank you letter on the other side so the donor <laughs> has it, but it's not part of the gushing or the happy part. You know, if you look at these um, thank you letters um, it, that I'm giving examples, there weren't tax receipts with these things, you know. Um, 
Britain says that they make it very small in the footer so it doesn't intrude. That's a great idea, Britain. I really do. Um, should monthly newsletters be personalized? You know, the more you can personalize, the better. It depends on your organization resources. Um, what resource would you suggest to show our board the importance of donor-centric communication versus look how great we are? Ooh. Um, give them uh, Penelope, Penelope Burke's book, Donor-Centered Fundraising. Um, give them any blog, blogger in the past five or ten years in the blogosphere on fundraising. You've got to educate them about what 21st century fundraising really is. You know, um, board, I think, by the way, we have a, um, an enormous opportunity with our boards. And let me give you the reasons. I work with boards all over the world. I do board retreats and workshops. And let me tell you what I find. I find that they're fascinated to learn about fundraising. They are curious. They, they think the data is, is extremely interesting to them and that you, my friends, have the opportunity to educate your board members more deeply about 21st century fundraising, how fundraising strategy works today, um, and, and how are they going to complain. You know, you're not asking them to take part in fundraising, but you're edu educating them. And if you, can, um, if you can educate them, then they're going to be able to vote and make better decisions, and they will make smarter investments in your overall fundraising program. Um, see, I'm about having to close out here soon. Oh, so Pauline said that her board members have just started writing handwritten Thank you notes to all new members, and they love it. Yay, they love it. Um, and then Laurie says, along with our thank you, we send a We Support sticker. Um, I think the sticker is lovely. I, I gave a gift to, um, I don't know if you all know the Buddhist leader Thich Nhat Hanh, but I was a volunteer. He's a big meditation, mindfulness um, um, Zen Buddhist leader. And I made a gift, I made a monthly pledge after being asked to, to his foundation, and they sent me a um, a little sticker that said "Breathe," <laughs> you know, because I practice meditation, you know. And I just put the sticker right up in my kitchen, and made me so happy. So, you know, there are some situations. I know this is a personal anecdote, but there are some situations where something like a sticker that really impacts your organization, uh, reflects your organization's work in the donors' uh, interest area, could be could be a lovely touch. Could be a lovely touch. And so I'm going to have to close down now. I want to invite you um, to, if you'd like to, to, um, to email me. I uh, think my email, um, you can tweet Gail Perry NC and I'll connect with you, or my email is um, gp at gailperry.com. Love to chat with you. Um, I do a lot. I do, uh, my next major gift coaching group is launching in January. I also do a lot of capital campaign coaching, lots of fun stuff. So, um, uh, Stephen, you want to take it back? Stephen? Sure, Gail. That was really awesome. Thanks so much. Um, and sure. thank you to uh, everyone who joined in today. Like Gail said, I know it's a super busy time of year, and I uh, definitely appreciate everyone hanging with us for those technical difficulties uh, on the front end. Um, so thanks so much, Gail. We'll have to have you uh, have you back maybe to talk about boards or, uh, or something of, the, of that sort because this is one of our most popular webinars of the year for sure. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, listen, well please, do, <laughs> please do connect with Gail. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody so much. I know how busy it is, and, and, and you know, y'all are doing such great work, and people are not, y'all are not thanked very much. So I want to thank you while you're working on your thank you letters. For, 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 for such wonderful, wonderful work in the world, and I just so appreciate it so much. It's an honor. It's really an honor Absolutely. to work with everybody today. Well, I'll, I'll close it out by saying again that we're going to send out the slides and a recording a, a little later on, so just look for an email from me. You'll be able to get that good stuff, um, and definitely follow along with Gail online. Shoot her an email. I know we didn't get to all the questions, and I apologize for that, but... Uh, Gail is willing to take some questions by email, so don't be shy at all. Uh, we'd love to see yeah. you again uh, on, a, on a future webinar. We, we have lots of resources on Bloomerang's website as well. Uh, our last, uh, second to last webinar of the year is one week from today. We've got Dennis Fishman uh, coming on board. He's going to talk about nonprofit blogging. So if, if you guys have a blog or maybe you, you don't have one but you're interested in getting started in a, a blogging 
uh, program for your organization. Check that out. Dennis is a super smart guy. That's going to be a fun one. Um, but if we don't see you then, we'll hopefully see you on another webinar soon. Um, good luck with the year-end appeals, especially good luck uh, with your thank you letters. Hopefully you can take some of Gail's advice and put that into uh, immediate use. Uh, so we'll call it a day there. Thanks for going a little long with us. Uh, look for an email from me later on today, and hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. So have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Thank you. Please stand by.